20,000 years ago, in a cave, entombed by ice, the curled body of a woman was found arms wrapped around her chest, a deer tooth pendant gripped tightly in her frozen hand. She died alone, or so we thought. But in 2023, scientists extracted DNA from that very pendant. What they discovered didn't just rewrite textbooks, it exposed how little we truly understand our ancestors. This woman wasn't some primitive drifter battling the cold in isolation. She was part of something greater an invisible web of people bound not by dominance, but by design. She belonged to a civilization of the cold, a network where survival was communal, not competitive, where strength was measured in shared warmth, not spilled blood. At prehistoric shadows, we believe history isn't just bones and stone sits memory in hibernation. This woman didn't die in silence. She left behind a sing-alone that still echoes today. And if we listen closely, we might remember what it truly means to be human. 26,000 years ago, the planet became a hostile force. This wasn't a gradual shift, it was a brutal, unrelenting assault. Temperatures crashed, dropping 15 degrees below anything modern winters can offer. Glaciers surged forward like slow-motion tsunamis, grinding down mountains and burying entire ecosystems. The very air turned against us, choked with dust 25 times thicker than what we inhale today. Megafaunath. Great beasts of the age fell one by one. Water vanished beneath layers of ice. Forests withered into memory. The earth, it seemed, no longer wanted us. But we endured, not through dominance, but through adaptation. Fire was no longer a luxury, it was life. Caves became sanctuaries. Every breath was measured, every movement purposeful. Where others vanished, we innovated. We mapped the land, read the stars, shared warmth, and stored memory in story. The cold tested every weakness and in doing so carved away the excess, leaving behind something leaner, harder, smarter. The Ice Age did not erase humanity. It revealed its shape. In the frozen wilderness of northern Siberia, archaeologists unearthed a discovery that rewrote assumptions about early human survival. At a site called Yana River, they found 192 bone needles each carefully stored, each crafted with deliberate precision. These were not crude tools, hastily carved in desperation. They were uniform, functional, elegant. Each needle bore a perfectly drilled eye hole and a tip sharpened with surgical intent. Different animals served different purposes. Fox bones for flexibility, lynx for durability, hair for intricate work. The choices were not random, they were calibrated. This was clothing design, not mere protection. Layers of fitted garments allowed bodies to trap, heat, breathe and move in sub-zero conditions. These weren't just implements of survival, they were instruments of life support. Long before agriculture, long before metals, humans had already mastered the physics of fabric. In a world without mercy, these needles stitched together not just clothing, but the future. Under the lens of electron microscopes, the truth became undeniable. These bone needles were not relics of desperation, but products of precision. Tiny spirals etched into their surfaces revealed rotary drilling techniques tools turning at consistent speeds, guided by skilled hands. The polish along the shafts hinted at repetitive use and standardization, hallmarks of early manufacturing. These weren't scattered artifacts, they were evidence of a process, a system. Needles designed not for single tasks, 
but for producing clothing in layers, tight-fitting undergarments to trap heat, mid-layers for insulation, outerwear to block wind and moisture. In modern terms, they had created thermal regulation systems. Yet this was 30,000 years before the concept of insulation would even have a name. Without metal, without machines, they built something profoundly effective with bone, fire, and thought. In the heart of the Ice Age, surrounded by extinction, humans engineered warmth not by chance, but by intention. On the vast, windswept Ukrainian steppe, at a place now known as Mizirik, Ice Age humans constructed dwellings that defied every expectation of prehistoric life. Built from the bones of at least 149 mammoths, these structures were not the work of a nomadic band scraping by in desperation. They were feats of architecture. Walls rose over 12 feet high, arranged in deliberate geometric patterns. Ivory bones were not just stacked, they were interlocked, joined so tightly that even the thinnest blade couldn't pass between them. Suspended flooring allowed air to circulate beneath, providing insulation and reducing moisture and innovation that speaks to environmental control. Inside, there was order. Separate zones for storing tools, processing materials, caring for infants. Hearths were centrally placed, not just for warmth, but as anchors of domestic life. These were not temporary shelters. They were permanent, multi-generational homes. In the middle of a glacial world, surrounded by predators and endless cold, humans built cities from the dead giants of the plains. And in doing so, they laid the bones of civilization. As archaeologists trace the origins of Ice Age tools and ornaments, a hidden web began to emerge on that spanned thousands of miles across frozen terrain. Obsidian, formed in the volcanic heart of the Caucasus, was discovered over 300 miles from its source, embedded in tools found in regions it did not naturally belong. Mediterranean seashells, delicate and decorative, surfaced in Central European settlements far from any coastline. And amber fossilized tree resin from the Baltic coast made its way to sites near the Black Sea. These objects had not drifted with time or tide. They had been carried hand to hand, generation to generation. This was not accident. It was deliberate movement, a form of logistics that predates roads, wheels, and writing. Trade routes stretched across glacial valleys and over treacherous passes, built on mutual benefit and some form of unspoken agreement. To exchange across that distance meant more than economic value, it required trust, memory, and a shared understanding in a world where language was not yet written, and danger was constant. In the damp soils near the English Channel, Archaeologists uncovered something extraordinary. Spondylus shells deep purple in blood. Red mollusks native only to the Aegean Sea, over 3,000 miles away. These weren't scattered by ocean currents or washed ashore by chance. They had been carried across mountain ranges, river systems, and tribal borders. To bring such an item that far, required more than knowledge of the land. It demanded coordination, extraction from coastal waters, packing and protection for the long journey. The ability to cross into foreign territories, barter across language barriers, and pass through cultures vastly different from one's own. And why? These shells weren't tools or weapons. They had no survival utility. But they held meaning. Worn as pendants or sewn into garments, they became status marker symbols of connection. To wear one was to signal participation in something larger than the local world. A traveler, a trader, 
a link in a chain that stretched farther than any one clan could walk in a lifetime. This was more than adornment. It was early economy measured in movement, memory, and meaning. In 2023, a team of researchers achieved something once thought impossible. They extracted ancient human DNA, not from bone, but from a pendant specifically. A deer tooth shaped and polished by human hands over 20,000 years ago. Microscopic grooves along the edges showed it had been worn frequently, rubbing against fabric and skin over countless days and seasons. The DNA revealed its wearer, a woman from the vast northern Eurasian steppes. Her identity, encoded in a single artifact, bridged millennia. But the implications went deeper. This was not simply decoration. The wear patterns told a story of passage, of presence, of personal significance. It was an object imbued with identity, perhaps even memory. And hers was not an isolated case. Across the continent, similar pendants, carvings, and crafted items point to something unexpected. A continent-wide network of people connected through shared symbols, styles, and methods. They were not fragmented tribes lost in isolation. They were points in a social matrix individuals embedded in something larger, bound not by proximity, but by purpose. During the last ice age, three distinct human species roamed the Earth. Neanderthals, Denisovans, and Homo sapiens. All three mastered fire, all fashioned tools, all lived in complex social groups. And yet, today, only one remains. Neanderthals possessed formidable strength, physically superior in almost every way. Denisovans left traces of astonishing brain development and adaptation to high altitude life. But strength and intelligence were not enough. Homo sapiens outlasted them not by domination, but through something less tangible and far more powerful, cooperation. Where others stayed within kin lines, sapiens built bridges between groups. They shared food across valleys, passed knowledge between strangers, and offered aid beyond blood ties. When one region's resources failed, they traded. When one family faltered, others lifted them. This capacity to align across distance, tribe, and tongue didn't just ease survival, it reshaped it. In an age of extinction, the human edge wasn't force, it was unity. The Ice Age didn't offer gentle pressure for change it, demanded transformation. And humans answered, not over leisurely epochs, but in evolutionary leaps measured in centuries. Genetic studies reveal that Homo sapiens of the glacial era were not simply adapting, they were redesigning themselves in real time. Lung capacity expanded to absorb oxygen from thin, frigid air. Blood circulation rewired to conserve heat in vital organs. Digestive systems became ruthlessly efficient, extracting maximum nutrition from lean meats, roots, and stored marrow. Body size shrank not from weakness, but as an energy-saving adaptation. Smaller humans required fewer calories, moved with less strain, and conserved precious warmth. Even brains evolved not in size, but in efficiency. Neural pathways optimized for memory, planning, and cooperation. Meanwhile, Neanderthals larger, stronger, more metabolically demanding, struggled under the weight of their own biology. In the end, survival didn't favor the biggest. It favored the most responsive. The ice sculpted more than the land. It carved the human form. Deep within the limestone walls of Kesem Cave, evidence reveals that Ice Age humans weren't merely surviving, they were experimenting. What took place, there wasn't instinctual adaptation, it was deliberate innovation. 
Birch bark was heated in sealed conditions to produce Tara waterproof adhesive, far more advanced than anything accidental fire could create. Animal bones, still rich with marrow, were sealed in hide and stored for weeks an early method of preservation, predating refrigeration by tens of thousands of years. They engineered smoke-free fires, manipulating airflow to reduce visibility likely to avoid detection by predators or rivals. They mapped animal migrations, identified cycles in plant availability, and timed their hunting with astonishing accuracy. Food caches were rotated, not only to extend supplies, but to reduce contamination risk. These weren't improvisational acts. They were early systems of trial, error, and refinement. Kesem was more than shelter. It was a place of data, of chemistry, of strategic planning. In the depths of winter, they didn't react. They prepared. The Ice Age didn't extinguish our species. It refined us. The woman buried in frost, her deer tooth pendant worn smooth by time, was not a forgotten relic. She was a message carved in Bona Testament to an entire civilization hidden beneath the snow. Her people were not wandering primitives. They were builders of homes from mammoth ivory, tailors of layered survival suits, keepers of memory, and architects of the world's earliest trade routes. They connected strangers with shared goals. They passed knowledge across generations without written words. They made the frozen world livable or not through dominance, but through design. And when the great thaw came, their blueprints endured. Trading paths became roads. Camps grew into cities. Symbol turned to script. Scarcity gave way to systems. What began as a fight to survive evolved into the foundation of civilization itself. At Prehistoric Shadows, we believe her story is not ancient history, it's a mirror. It reminds us that humanity didn't rise through conquest. We rose because we learned to cooperate, to plan, to care beyond the tribe. And today, in an age that often forgets its roots, we see echoes of their choices in our own. Every time we choose unity over division, foresight over fear, generosity over isolation, we continue the legacy they began. Because the coldest night in human history wasn't the end. It was the spark. Subscribe to Prehistoric Shadows. Because the past still speaks and the ice never forgets.